Good morning. Good morning. Good to have a good crowd today and a lot of visitors, really, so that's excellent. Always good to have that. I am filling in for probably like three or four or five people. So I always wonder whenever they call me, like, how many people did they call and said no before they got to me? But hopefully, hopefully that's not the case. And regardless, we're here to uh, glorify God and hopefully that I have something to share with you that will that will benefit each of you. Um, so I definitely want to thank the elders and, and Brian and those that, that did ask me to speak and uh, thank Bobby for the prayer. And Matt Jason's, I actually thought about calling Jason and telling him to sing a song, but I don't think I would have picked as good a one as that second one that he sang. I'll allude to that in just a second. But So when Brian called me, I obviously am super nervous to, to do this, but I always say yes. And he told me the date, and it was obviously today. And that's, uh, my mind jumped back uh, 10 years ago, almost to this date, I started chemo and radiation when I had cancer and at the time was given five months to live. And obviously it was a, a trying time. So I thought what better opportunity to talk about that. So that's what I'm going to share a few points with you on this morning. And I have notes, and I really have no idea whether I have 20 minutes of material or three hours of material, but I may, I may have to stop, and we'll, we'll pick it up again some other, some other day if I'm given the opportunity. So I, I entitled this Walking Through Darkness, and everybody's going to walk in darkness, but saints can walk through darkness. And if you would turn to Psalms 23 read a few verses here to start with. Psalms 23. And what I hope to get across to you this morning is lessons that can be learned from affliction, addiction, persecution, loss, and things like that. Um, God, God has promised us, as I hope to, to make clear, that we can... He can get us through those things. Psalms 23, I'll read 4 through 6. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thy rod, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There's a lot of eyes and me's and minds in that, and that's, a, that's an amazing uh, promise right there. Suffering draws us apart from our own, whatever we have going on, and allows us to, to focus on God more than more than we may sometimes. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 16 through 18, tells me, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So, our consequences, though they may limit us, they don't limit God. And throughout the Bible, um, and there's, I'm sure, hundreds of examples, but some that quickly come to mind, Joseph. Job, Paul, Jesus. I mean, those are just great examples of people who, who walk through darkness. Um, I do firmly believe now there are some lessons in life that cannot be learned without affliction. Because if we're doing good 
on our own or we're making it or we think we're making it or we're doing we don't tend to give God the, the credit and the glory that he that he deserves. So um, the song Jason sang that was so fitting and he walks with me and he talks with me. Um, God will not send us on a journey. He's promised to not send us on a journey without equipping us well. Um, 2 Timothy 3.17 talks about the man of God being uh, thoroughly furnished to all good works. This passage we just read talks about the, the rod and the staff. And I believe, I believe it was mentioned not too long ago, you know, the difference in the rod and the staff. Why was rod and staff put in that verse there? Well, a rod, to my understanding, is there for protection. A staff is for direction and leadership. Christ can, you know, can pull you back to him, pull you back close to him as we stumble or make our way through whatever it is that we are dealing with. So I guess if you were to be trying to take notes on this, number one, good luck. But the first topic I would I would like to tell you is about uh, walking through affliction can be very pure, can be very purifying because it kind of gets rid of all the junk you have in your life and it focuses you focuses you on um, what is really important. Um, so until you take time to look back on events or you know you have that time to step back, surely Joseph and some of those ones we talked about, they couldn't see the divine path that God had them on until they got through with uh, whatever it was in life. And to, to look back on that and try to glean or gain, gain lessons from the things they have been had through. So though things in life seem chaotic or maybe just the world in general, um, we do have to remember, we do know, we do have the promise that, that God is in control. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 talks about how we, you know, we walk by faith and not by sight. So as Christians, God has never been confused, even though everyone around you may have been and running around like crazy, so... Like thinking back to like seven years ago, I had um, seven wrong diagnoses before before they started treating me. So, you know, your your brain's pretty messed up for a couple of months there trying to process everything everybody's telling you. And then, but you have to realize that God is in control. He's always by your side. Sometimes we have to quiet ourselves, quiet the flow of life to, to realize that. So some of these lessons, though, through purification, do not maybe come to you until after this brief, which the verse we read a minute ago, which we faint not, though our outward men perish, this light affliction, but for a moment. Now, so that tells us for a moment it will end. Now, it doesn't always end maybe the way we want it to, but it's not really about us. So we do have to keep that in mind as well. And I did realize one thing when preparing this lesson. We have so many great speakers here that um, don't have to flip pages. And they know, so the lesson does does flow a lot well if you don't have to flip all the pages like I have to do. So, but second point I'd like to say: affliction, persecution, addiction, pain, whatever it is, we all are going through. Everyone we meet is going through, or will soon be. It can be very instructional. Would be my second point: purifying, instructional. Second point. I'm not here to say by any means I'm a authority on affliction, but I know a lot more about it now than I did a few years ago. Um, so 
there's many in this auditorium, many that have been tremendous examples to me over the years. I mean, literally a man that drug his wife, carried his wife into worship service. And, you know, I don't want to call names because I'd leave a lot of people out, but uh, a lot of people in here that make it to worship with a lot of stuff going on. And so, I mean, you're like the like the Hebrews, the chapter in Hebrews about all the, the men of faith. I mean, there's a lot of men and women of faith here that have given us, should give us all great examples of that. And I really, up until that point in my life, I don't think I really thought that much about it. I was like, hmm, they're just at worship. But you don't realize what it takes for them to to get to worship. So many people in this auditorium have been through a lot, much, much worse than me. Uh, just really what, unless you know it, one of the hardest things to do when going through something serious as far as I'm talking about a medical affliction like now, but but it could be applied to other things, is the waiting. Waiting is uh, brutal. When you're waiting for a test result or you're waiting on this, that, or the other, it's hard to, it's hard to get that out of your mind. So, there again, this can be a very instructional, instructional part of, of your life. So, through this little section here, I'm just trying to share you a little snapshot of some things that I've learned from God's Word. Hopefully, it will help some of you out maybe when you face these trials. Often in our life, I think we're like recreation to death. I mean, we make too much of our own joy and desires and plans and dreams. And Hiram has preached about this right here, but I think I've been doing this longer than Hiram's been alive. My grandpa um, used to always say, Lord willing. So he just got me in the habit of saying, Lord willing. So I try not to ever finish anything that I'm saying about vacation or whatever it is. I try to always finish with Lord willing because I think when we fill our lives with all this junk, we, I don't know this for sure, but this is just my, my take on it. Um, sometimes these things can be taken away from us kind of withdraw us for a while till we can distinguish his plans from our plans. Because I think many times, I want to say I, you probably could, you probably could put a, your own I in there. I get on my own way of God. God wants me. God has chosen me. But so the only thing keeping me from doing the right thing would obviously have to be me. So, again, if I'm too wrapped up in me, then I really could miss out on a lot of blessings. Um, I actually did write a thing one time called The Blessings of Cancer, which seems crazy to, to first hear it, but there definitely are some things that can be can be gleaned from that. And I have shared that with um, a, no, a number of you have asked me for that in the past, and I have hopefully done that. But every face you see, everyone here this morning is going through something. And at the same time, every face here is loved by God. And God wants what's best for you. And even though you got to be careful, my daughter actually just mentioned this the other day when when praying for patients. I mean, you need to be careful when you pray that you know you know what you're praying for, because sometimes the way God teaches you, you know, you might just want Him to hand you this patience or whatever it is, all wrapped up in a nice package and sit it there on your doorstep, and that's. It's not going to happen that way. You don't learn patience just sitting in a sitting in an easy chair, I don't think. 
So, I guess the first thing that I, well, maybe not the first thing, one of the most important things that I, I learned about this is not feeling sorry for yourself. Regardless of pretty much anything you're going through right now, there's somebody, there's somebody having a worse day. Um, right now, for example, <laughs> I'm, uh, well, I'm not going to get into that part right now. Everybody, everybody's got things going on. And there's no reason to think that your thing is any worse than anybody else's. And that's one of the great things about gathering here for a, a worship service. And, and Christ knew that when, when um, in stating the church and things like, or stating the, the meeting and the coming together. I mean, it is, an emo, it is a great, only beside, not only the spiritual blessings we get from it, but the emotional support, the physical support that we get from other people and our things that we have gone through allows us to relate to other people in a way that we would never be able to relate, relate to them maybe uh, because of the things that you now have have in common with that what with that person um so like right now I'm trying to get off of a medication that I've been on for 10 years and it's it's not easy and I've probably slept like 8 hours in the last 3 days but I do try to think, and I do say this every hour I see on the clock, and every time I see a new day turn into Saturday, turn into Sunday, and Friday turned into Saturday. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And it's not easy always, but that's what He told us. Regardless, circumstances should not base our happiness, our our um faithfulness or our trust in God or our strength in God, um, He promised to walk us through these things. He didn't say it'd be easy. He didn't say He'd walk you around it. But He did say that He would walk you through them. So, if you have experienced any afflictions and pains yet, you're either really young or it's coming. So, so hold on. Um, unfortunately. Uh, but again, we can count ourselves blessed and know that even with, when faced with terrible news, regardless of what it may be, loss of family, friends, health, job, finances, we really only have two choices. It's either going to draw us closer to Christ or it's going to push us away from Christ and teach us not to lean on our own thoughts and understanding and things like that. Um, a lot of the songs in our Bible, and I will admit that until some things happened in my life, I don't think that I unfortunately paid attention to some of the songs of worship like I should and like Hiram has mentioned in some lessons here recently. I mean, songs like the one Jason just sung this morning. Um, 370, where could I go but to the Lord? Number 110, it is well with my soul. We sing a lot about it, but do we actually do it? Um, Psalms 4610 says to be still and know that I am God. And be still doesn't just mean be quiet. That's surrender. We cannot hold on and let go at the same time. Um, she just went out, but uh, the grandbaby, man, I'm so, oh man, I'm so thankful for that child. But, uh, so I've been working with her on swimming here the last month or so, and it's it's crazy the the, the faith that you can, just so many attributes of God's mind that you can learn from a child and, for that matter, a dog. I could do a whole other lesson on that too one day. But um, anyways, on a, on a child and the confidence she has in you to jump off the side of the pool or do whatever it is you ask her to do, knowing that 
you're going to be there. And sometimes in teaching her to swim, I do not catch her like she's always used to doing. I let her, I let her struggle for a split second, and I feel really guilty about it. And she gets pretty upset with me for a second or two. And her eyes look so disappointed, like, I mean, you've been catching me for an hour. How did you, how did you miss that one? But, you know, they have, to, they have to swim a little bit. They have to kick a little bit. And then she, she can actually do it. And, and we can actually do it with his help. But we have to sometimes have that little struggle to, um, to realize that. So when you do realize in life that you're helpless to fix things that you have going on around you, this storm, whatever it is, and your things are not going to get better without God, um, you know, that will that'll put you in a, in a real good place to understand a lot of scriptures. And I have a lot of them down here, but man, that clock is just running super fast. I'm not going to be able to get to all of them, but um, the path, the uh, the scripture reading that Brother Simpson read, and um, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, 2 Corinthians 12, 9, that talks about my grace is sufficient, and most gladly, therefore, would I... My, my grace is sufficient because my strength is made perfect in weakness. So, most gladly, therefore, would I boast in, that the uh, power of Christ may dwell in me, not on your, again, not on your own weakness, not on anything you've done, not on anything the, that you have acquired, but what God has done, done through you. And also, a really great verse that I'm not going to be able to read, but if you'd like to jot it down, Psalms 116, 3 through 9 was very, very uh, meaningful to me, it is very meaningful to me. So you just should, hopefully you just develop a real renewed appreciation for just the simple everyday things that many of you, most of you, if you're like anybody else, you kind of take those things for granted. Um Things that you, you know, people worry about their jobs and they worry about their, you know, your next vacation and what, you know, things that are going to do next. And um, that stuff really pales in comparison. The whole thing just flips upside down. And really, you don't even when some things happen, it's really a you get your priorities right is, is what it really does. Um, but it takes a real shake up sometimes to to do that. So. However, I do know some people that the even though they have overcome something and they they are doing well and God has blessed them to get them to the point they are today it's hard not to and I'm going to say particularly with cancer right now it's hard not to think about the thought of that reoccurring or when it reoccurs or you know that that thought probably runs through my mind I would say at least once a week it's probably more than that but it probably runs through their most you know it's I would think that's pretty common of most any even an addiction or uh, something or other like that the, the the fear you should never let the fear of that keep you from taking your next step. I mean, I do know a person, not a member of this congregation. Honestly, I just know her husband. I don't actually know her. Her fear of a reoccurrence sucks really all the joy out of her life. She's so concerned about what if, what if, I don't know what I would do if, 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 if you, I mean, you literally will if yourself to death. If you if you go on with all that stuff right there, so once God's got you through, not that it may come back, but if it does, then then you'll deal with it again. Don't continue to to dwell on that part right now. Okay, so we've got through. It's purifying. It's instructional. The third point I'd like to make is going through one of these things can make a very intimate relationship with Christ. Psalms 139.14 tells us that we are very fearfully and wonderfully made. And I've heard about a personal walk with Christ all my life. And I knew 
all, you know, I knew all the words, but I don't know that I actually really truly understood that. But I, I know now that God knows me on an individual basis, which I know is not anything. It, it tells you that in the Bible, if you would, again, be still and, and read it. I know, as the song just says, that he walks with me and he does talk with me and things like that. And it's a it's a weird concept once you attempt to wrap your mind around it, because at least for me, it made me feel real small and insignificant at first. But then as I studied on it more and delved into it a little bit more, I mean, my relationship with Christ is tailor-made. It's like nobody else in this congregation, and you have your own, and you have your own, and it's just a, it's really a very empowering thing when you think about that, that God, creator of the universe, and everything that we have around us knows me individually. It really, um, you know, as the Bible tells us, I mean, if God's for me, who can be against me? Or what can man do to me? Or what can, I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen to me? If I have that promise of, of Christ and eternal life, I mean, the worst thing here that can happen, obviously, is, is death, which um, in the big scheme of things, our little blip on the screen is not that long to begin with, whether it's 50 years or 100, 100 years or whatever it may be. So, um We know from reading Matthew 21, 22, I believe, says, you know, whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Um, again, all lessons learned are not, are not the same way. And I love the verse that tells us about coming boldly before the throne of grace that we may find mercy and help and time and need and things like that. When you think about which we're studying, I, I don't know, I'm pretty confused up here, but I think on Wednesday nights about, yeah, we're in Hebrews and talking about the, uh, the high priest and things like that. I mean, that's a pretty bold concept to come boldly before the throne of grace. I mean, like even like the high priest was scared to come, you know, back in the, in the in the tabernacle to come into the holy of holies well and you, you talk about like with um esther going before the king and not knowing you know not knowing whether uh the king would you know lift the scepter or things like that i mean so that's a pretty scary um thing but christ has told us to and to pray boldly i mean some of the prayers that uh like Job and some of them prayed, I mean, if, to read them, I mean, they kind of are like, I mean, he really kind of calls, I don't want to say calls God out, but I mean, he kind of does. He's like, I mean, God, you promised that you were, you know, you were going to do this. And so we have to pray like that and not, not in a way like we deserve anything. We don't deserve anything, but we do need to pray a bold prayer and believe and know that uh, Christ is going to, to hear us. So there's truly a lot of treasures to be found in darkness. Um, as with Joseph and Job and all the ones that I've mentioned before, Christ including, God doesn't make bad things happen to us, but He doesn't keep things from always happening to us as well. If He thinks that we will better be suited to make it to heaven, through a way that takes us 20 years or 30 years rather than one that took us 100 years, then he, um, he may do it that way. And God has never, I mean, God laughs at the word impossible. He, God has never been surprised at our situation, even though we may be. I mean, we obviously, everybody's been in a situation that, oh man, I cannot believe this just happened. God wasn't shocked. God's not surprised. God was prepared for it. Um, God is never looking for, oh man, what am I going to do now like we do? We know that all debts are not settled here on earth. And again, things may not always wind up the way we would have chose, but 
this side of eternity, there's a lot of lessons here that that we're just we're just not going to get. So what's the conclusion of all this? While we're able, let us walk in the light. Psalms 119, 105. Why do we do this? Not so that anything good can people can say of us, but like Paul said, so that God is glorified and that we can say with confidence, thy will be done, Lord willing, uh, it is well, and all those things. And hopefully, ultimately, we will get ourselves to heaven. And along the line, hopefully we'll take somebody with us. So the fourth thing I'm going to wrap up with here in just two or three minutes our situation, affliction, opportunity, whatever it is you want to call it, should be very motivational. So if you tried to put four points on this, this would be the four points. And I tried to make it tidy like some of their lessons where they all start with the same letter, all that. I can't really do all that. So my four points are it can be purifying, it can be instructional, it can be intimate, and then finally it can be motivational. My predicament give me a renewed courage to talk to other people about grace, about goodness, about things that can only come after you've walked the walk. Um, again, our past, your past, allows you to connect with people that I may not do as well. Again, we have a tailor-made relationship that with Christ, but we can also, there's people out there that are looking for somebody just like you and me today um, that, you know, nobody else would quite fit what it is they're looking for. So we need to be on the lookout for that and a great strength for me was, um, again, it's in Hebrews, and I think in Hebrews 4, but just talking about explaining to them why the new covenant was better than the old covenant, and that our high priest, our high priest has been through everything we're going through. He's been tempted, he's been tried, he's been beat, he's been without a place to sleep, he's been, he's, he's done it. And he knows what you're going through and what I'm going through. And we can, we can gain a lot from that. And when we look back on our crooked path through, through the eyes of Christ or through a, when we look back at our crooked path with a divine map, I guess, I mean, it's, it's going to be a pretty straight line. He was trying to get you here and this was the best way to get you here. So, if there's any here today that have a need or a burden maybe that you're trying to bear alone, I mean, Christ promises in Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Um, today, is not only the presence, it's also a present, and it's really all we got. So, um, life short, the Bible tells us that from beginning to end. Um, Job 41, 1 and 2 makes it very clear. James 4, 14. James 4, 14. So, bottom line, life short, judgment is sure. Every breath is a second chance. I mean, never it's never too late until we, till ultimately we decided it's too late. God, God's never going to say it's too late. So that choice is up to us. So if you're here today and you've never put on Christ as your personal Savior, or if you've wandered from your walk with Christ, now is the the only time you have. Now is the time to make that right. So come now as we sing the song. Thank you.